what we're going to do next is we're going to move on to session management. So I'm going to install a few more packages. So first of all, we're going to install Express Session. So this package is something I've already covered on the channel. You can look for a video called Session Authentication in Express, and that one talks about this package in a lot more detail. But assuming you've seen this before, I'm going to head over to npm.im slash express session. And all this package will be used to manage sessions and create session cookies. If you scroll to the very bottom of the page, you're going to see a bunch of session stores. So even though the package already comes in with a store built in, this one is known as a memory store. So in fact, it's only useful for development and we can't really use it for production. So instead what we want to do is we want to hook up express session to a store. So in this case, we can use a MongoDB store or we can use, for example, Redis. What I'll use for this tutorial is connect Redis and this one will allow us to connect to a Redis instance. So let's install express session. Let's also install connect Redis. I've kind of touched on Connect Redis in the past, but there's been a major change with the package. In the new version 4, we now have to provide the Redis client separately. So we can still use the Redis package or we can switch to a better one known as IO Redis. So this is the one I'm going to install. And because we're going to be using MongoDB, I'm also going to install Mongoose like this. All right, and since I'm using TypeScript, I'm also going to install a bunch of types. So let's install types express session. Let's do types connect Redis, types IO Redis, and also types MongoDB, and finally types Mongoose. All right, so that should be it. So what we can do back in here, in fact, I'm going to go ahead and copy some boilerplate from here. So let's paste that in. All right, so I'm going to switch from require.js to ESM. So let's import from IO Redis, and this will be capitalized. Okay, so we're going to have an import of session also. So let's import session from express session and finally connect Redis. So let's just import connect Redis from connect Redis. And for our Redis store, what we're going to do is we're going to invoke connect Redis on the session. And for the client, so let's call this one client, const client, we're going to initialize Redis like this. And we can pass in a bunch of options. So this can be port and this can be host. And for this session, so we're going to pass in the client using shorthand syntax. And of course, the application needs to be declared before like this okay All right so as you can see we already have quite a few values hard-coded so for example the HTTP port we are gonna also hard-code things like the port for Redis now it makes a lot of sense to extract those to a separate file so in this case what we can do is we can either create a file called config.ts to house all of the configuration variables but what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to create a config folder and inside of that folder I'm going to touch a few files so I'm going to touch database.ts file we're gonna also create one for cache one for session and one for the application and let's also have an index.ts file so what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to cache.ts file we're gonna extract a few variables from process env and in the end we're going to export const redis options so this will simply be an object so instead of passing the port and host in there in this file we're gonna pass them in here and in fact what I'm gonna also do is I'm going to import from IO Redis, I'm going to import Redis options and I'll declare my object as Redis options. So what this will allow us to do is this will allow us to have a host, a port, and also the password. Okay, so those are going to be referenced from process.env. So we're going to have Redis port. By default, this is going to be 6379. We'll have Redis host. So I'll have local host and finally also Redis password. So I'll have this one as secret and we're going to reference them in the options. So this will be Redis ports. We'll have Redis host and finally Redis password like this. All right, so we do get one warning from TypeScript and this one has to do with the fact that any variable extracted from process env is going to be a string. So what we can do is we can either parse int it with the base of 10 or we can also simply put a plus sign in front and this will typecast the string to an integer. All right, then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to config index.ts and I'm going to export everything from cache like this. So instead of hard coding the values here, we're actually going to import the object we've just created from config. And this one is going to be Redis options. So we're going to pass them into the Redis instance. And then we're going to do the same thing for the session. So let's take out the session and I'm going to switch to config slash session.ts. So we're going to have a bunch of variables from process.env once again. So this one will export a const of session options like this, except the store, we're going to have to extract it in here. So let's have our session options and we'll pass in the store as well. So in fact, I'll bring it in on the separate line again. So let's have our session options and also the store. Okay, so this is going to also come from the config. So let's make sure we export that. So in here, 
let's export everything from session and now the session itself so this is going to take a session secret we're going to default to some passphrase so let's say please keep this secret mate okay in fact what i'm going to do is i'm going to also import the options from express session and this will be session options like this so let me go in there and i'm actually going to copy all the options and we're going to fill them out one by one so the secret we already have so this is going to be session secret we're going to have a name so this one will default to session name and we're going to have one that's by default going to be sid so we're going to have a store but this one will be provided in the source index.js or index.ts file instead so now for the cookie we're going to have the maximum age so let's fall back to session lifetime or actually let's call this session idle timeout and we'll have this one default to half an hour I'm going to create that variable in a second so let's do const half an hour so we're going to have one second or a thousand milliseconds multiplied by 60 this will be 60 seconds or one minute multiplied by 30 that's going to give us half an hour or 30 minutes sign we can skip we can skip expires http only is already true by default path and domain we can skip so secure this one is going to be conditional depending on whether the application is in production mode so let's actually switch to app.ts and this one is going to export node environment set to development by default we're going to take this out from process end in fact we don't need to export it yet i'm going to instead export in prod like this so this one will be a boolean we're going to check if node environment equals production and if it does equal that value then we're in production so we're going to need to go back to the config file and i'm going to export everything from app like this on the same note let's also export application port once again, we're going to default to 3000. So let's add export. And then in source, we're going to import application port. And I'll replace 3000 with that application port instead. Okay, so now in session, we can import in prod. Okay, and we'll have same side attribute also set to true. Okay, now for gen ID, we can skip that. So rolling, I'm going to set this one to true, meaning that even though we impose a half an hour timeout, you're going to be able to extend that timeout if you're still active with this session. So we're going to roll the cookie or update the cookie on every request now resave i'm going to set this one to false typically for resave you're going to want to have that value set to false and that's because a lot of the times especially if you're using a separate store for example redis or mongo what express session is going to do is it's going to call the touch method on it so what this touch method is going to do is it's going to update the ttl or time to live in case of redis and this will basically bump the session lifetime so we can rely on that for the time being and i'm going to set save uninitialized to false and i think that should be it now we do have an issue with the timeout once again so we're going to Need to cast it to an integer All right so that's going to be it for this session so now we're going to be passing in the session options and the last thing we're going to do is we're going to also import mongoose from mongoose and let's create a database connection so mongoose has a connect method that we can use this one accepts the database uri so let's call it mongo uri and also mongo options it's in fact permissified so we can actually call it await on it but because top level await is not available yet in node what we can do instead is we can have an ify wrap that with parentheses and invoke that function we'll have a defensive semicolon in front because we have an import statement that doesn't end with a semicolon I personally don't use semicolons following the standard style guide but we're gonna paste in the connect call inside of the ify and I'm also going to move everything else inside of that function so let's take out our code and paste it in all right so we'll make this an async function and we're gonna go back to our database.ts file so in here once again we're gonna export a bunch of things but we're gonna extract the variables from process env and we're gonna export const mongo uri and also we're going to export const mongo options and what i'm going to do is i'm going to switch to chrome and let's search for mongoose i'll go into the documentation let's go to connections and we can copy the connection string and also the options so for the options we're going to be passing new url parser set to true and i'm going to also pass use unified topology set to true in fact what we can do is we can once again import from mongoose connection options we're going to declare our options with that all right and now for the connection string itself we're going to have a mongo username set to admin we'll have mongo password this one's going to be secret by default we'll have mongo host let's have this as localhost let's also have mongo port by default is going to be 27017 and finally mongo database this will be the database name and we can call it for example auth right so let's inject all the variables in the connection string so we'll have 
our Mongo username will have the password. Well, the password will be a little bit special in the sense that we need to escape special characters if there's any. So a lot of the times your password will have non-alphanumeric characters. We're going to want to, in that case, call encode URI component. Let's see this one. All right, so let's make sure we escape those characters. And then for the host, this one's going to be Mongo host. We'll have a port. And finally, we'll have the database. So this one will be Mongo database. All right, so let's just make sure that we export this file as well. So we'll have an export everything from database. And in here, we can now go ahead and import Mongo URI and also Mongo options like this. And so the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to package JSON file in the root of our project. And I'm going to create a dev script and we're simply going to head and run npm run dev with the prefix of api like this so what this will do is it's going to look at the api directory and it's going to find the package json file inside of it and find the dev script and then run it so if we try to do npm run dev right now this of course is not going to show any output and that's because we don't have any database and also we don't have any cache to connect to 